Thank you very much. Mr Deputy Speaker, given that I have raised the Afghanistan security situation with the government for months, I fully support this motion for a joint committee investigation into our chaotic and unplanned withdrawal, which has been an avoidable catastrophe, a self-inflicted humiliation, starting with the people of Afghanistan and ending with our own national security interests. Unfortunately, there simply isn't enough time to go into all the answers that I have received from ministers, but even as late as the 26th of July, the government were informing me in response to my written parliamentary questions, and I quote, there is no military route for the Taliban to achieve their goals. How wrong they were. Only 20 days before the fall of Kabul, ministers were telling me, and I quote, Afghanistan now has a burgeoning civil society with a free press and an education system, and today women hold over a quarter of the seats in Afghanistan's parliament. Where is that burgeoning civil society now? The education system, the free press, Afghanistan's female MPs fleeing for their lives, all while the now sacked Foreign Secretary was topping up his tan and what can only be described as conducting Dunkirk via WhatsApp. The situation has left Afghans who were counting on us to help build a better society feeling betrayed and we're already seeing an erosion of hard-fought rights for women, education and the freedom of faith. Many may not know, Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank my honourable friend for, for giving way. I share his, his real concerns for female politicians, like many of them as, I, as a Muslim woman. I'm keen to see democracy preserved, but I simply don't trust the Taliban when it comes to protecting the rights of women. So, so does my friend share, also share my concerns with the safety of female Afghan politicians? I fully agree with my honourable friend and, as I've said, women's rights are important and we need to preserve those. But many may not know, Mr Deputy Speaker, that Afghanistan used to be home to around 500,000 seats in the 1970s. But today, that figure will be closer to 700. A community whose historical ties and presence there date back to the 15th century were persecuted firstly by the Mujahideen and during the last Taliban rule, in something rep reminiscent of fascist regimes, Hindus and Sikhs were forced to wear yellow armbands for identification and hang yellow flags over their homes. I have been asked to help many Sikhs and Hindus who remain and are at risk during this Taliban regime, as are Christians, Hazara Muslims and other religious, religious minorities who have already been victims of deadly targeted attacks. I've written to ministers, so how is the government going to help them? Some uh, of uh, my constituents have been coming to me in tears and their family members, many of whom are British citizens, have been abandoned by the government and are at risk. We're not talking about six or seven, Mr Deputy Speaker, but about six or seven hundred, and we need to get them to safety. These include numerous police officers, prosecutors, government officials, families of UK-based journalists and judges, female professors, people who have played a leading role in women's rights organisations, British children, some only a few months old, and many others. In fact, my hard-working team has been asked to help around 110 UK nationals or Afghans in a priority group. And following the letter MPs received on Monday from uh, one of the government ministers saying that the government won't be pursuing Afghan cases in the usual ways, will only be logging cases for data purposes and asking MPs to stop raising cases on behalf of constituents. What an absolute farce. Abandoned seems to be the right word, Mr Deputy Speaker. The government must instead pull out all the stops to avert a humanitarian crisis and get my constituents and their families to safety and work with the international community to ensure refuge for those in danger, especially religious minorities and those who bravely assisted our troops in the rebuilding process. To help crea uh, create the situation, Mr Deputy Speaker, is bad enough. But for the government to not do all it can to support those impacted is unconscionable and unforgivable. Thank you. Very